I'm not gonna be wasting your time with this video. You probably clicked on it because you have been overwhelmed by the amount of content on the internet about how do I start becoming a game developer? And here, I'm just gonna give you 10 like no BS tips on how do I actually do this. And the first tip that I'm gonna give you is also the most important one. And that is that nothing on this list or on any other list you'll find on YouTube or the internet is going to beat actually taking action. You can like keep watching videos about the best engine to use, about how to design the perfect game, about why Firewatch is a masterpiece in narrative design. But if you never even like write down your idea, if you never open that engine to begin with, you're just wasting time and you're also wasting potential because you probably have some bit of game design in you. And if not, at least you'll be bringing something unique to the table. But by failing upon actually taking action, you're kind of squandering your opportunities. So I don't mind if Right now, this is the only tip you see and you close the video and you open up your engine and you start actually prototyping something or you start writing down your idea. Honestly, even though it's bad for like the retention, it would still mean more to me that you actually do something with your game dev dreams instead of just permanently thinking like, hey, I could be the next Stardew Valley or I could be the next Undertale, but never acting upon it. Okay, you're still watching? Well, my second tip is that fun should be your priority. No matter what you do, no matter how beautiful your game is, if you're starting out, the only thing that matters is that your game is actually fun. It doesn't matter how pretty your game is or like how we also had like quite deep mechanics. If your game isn't fun enough for someone to appreciate the deep mechanics or go far enough into the game, then it doesn't matter how much effort you put into the late game. If your core of your game, whatever genre you take, isn't fun. So what you should do here is just prototype a lot. Use either like basic assets or basic shapes and just figure out, okay, how am I gonna work on my game and finding fun? Joining game jams or looking at like game jam restrictions and game jam submissions is a really good source of inspiration because you don't have the time to make a beautiful game during a game jam. All you can focus on is making it as pretty as possible. And that's what you should be doing as well. For my third tip, don't worry about the engine. Stop being like, oh, but this engine is like slightly better performance wise or this game has been made in, in Unreal and I wanna make a game like that. Just pick an engine and get to work. Go back to step one, otherwise action will always trump just thinking about what the optimal engine is. Really simple, I'm gonna make the decision for you if you want to. If you don't really have any programming experience, go with Game Maker Studio. If you have like some previous program experience, go with Godot and don't overthink it. Just get working and make something out of it. Sure, there's plenty of differences between the engines, but none of them will limit you from making a good game. Also, if you wanna go for a custom engine, I really suggest you don't do it because it's adding a lot of extra work to your game and generally making progress and all of those things is also going to be much slower, whereas you need to find that fun as fast as possible. And that's something that an engine will help you with. Now, once you have picked that engine, just go and follow a tutorial if you've never used it before. And what I want you to do is not follow it blindly. Look for like either a shooter game or a platformer or something along those lines, like a pretty broad genre where you can change the variables basically as you're programming it. So don't just blindly copy paste everything, but look at, okay, how can I tweak whatever the, the person making the tutorial is doing to make it a bit more fun or a bit more to my vision? Maybe you're using different kinds of assets. Maybe you're changing the way like the balancing works of the gun if you're making an FPS game, just to already get a bit of that game design feeling as well whilst you're learning the basics of an engine. Once you feel comfortable to move out of prototyping and actually work on whatever game idea you have, scope it down till you think you have a scope of about one month at most. Don't worry, you're gonna keep inflating it, but one of the biggest mistakes you can do is scope for your first game to take like three, four years. Because sure, there are like a few odd cases where the game developers are actually capable of going through like years of very slow progress and like working on a game where the grand vision isn't there. But chances are, if you're watching a video like this, you're just needing to get started really. You're not even certain if game development is for you. So why would you commit to like two years down the line? You'll just end up disappointed if you drop the game off like one and a half years and there's not really that much for you to see. And then once you have that game idea and you have that scope, break it down and use a Kanban board like Trello or Notion where you have like the little cards and you can make individual tasks. So if you're making an RPG game, which you shouldn't do, but let's assume, you could have a card for like your character select screen, for casting a certain specific magic ability, for basic enemy health, all of these like individual components. It's just good practice to start using Kanban boards and learning a little bit of like agile development to actually have an overview of what's your game 
what does it still need and what are the main tasks you should be focusing on. If you just go into it blindly and be like, hey, I'm going to make an open world MMORPG in a month. First of all, reconsider. And second of all, if you don't even really know what you're working on, if you just open up the engine and are like, hey, I'm up, just code a little bit and I'll see where I get, you're going to be losing so much time and you're going to be working very inefficiently. So have those tasks and make sure that you can always dedicate like, your focus onto one specific mechanic at a time. And as you are developing that game, don't be scared to just share your progress as well. Make a little GIF and put it on any social media platform, really. You can share it to Reddit, for example, or on X, or maybe even join our own Discord server and show what you're working on. We have an entire showcase channel where other developers show the progress that they're making on their games. You can find a link to that down below. And this will get a feedback loop going where people will be like, hey, this looks cool, but maybe like this doesn't really seem to fit the vibe or this is a mechanic that I really like and maybe you can expand a bit further upon it. And it just gives you like, you know, that feeling in your brain of, hey, what I'm doing actually has a purpose and you don't spend like a lot of time all on your own, uncertain if what you're working on even is really worth it. And then our eighth tip, no matter what, engine you use, use version control. Look into something like Git LFS or Unity also has some systems or whatever other engine usually to track your code, track your changes and be able to easily revert. You can, if you're working on this solo, you don't even need to like host it on like a GitLab or a GitLab. You can just host it locally, but that still allows you to go back certain commits or to work with branches. And it's just good practice because everyone uses some kind of version control in the industry. You don't want to deal with, oh, I just broke something and now I like have no idea how to fix my game anymore. Whereas otherwise you can do just do a git revert and problem solved. You just rewrite the code like from the point where you failed. And this will save you so much time as well. And once again, if you link your branches, for example, to the issues you make, you can really get a very professional approach already to how you structure making your games. And this one is a bit more of a what to do when you're relaxing, you'll probably still be playing games because usually I don't really know that many game developers who absolutely hate games. But what I ask you and what is going to be really good to do is try to analyze the games you're playing. So don't just play them and consume them, but actually think, okay, write down like, these are the things that I like about this game. Maybe you're playing Assassin's Creed and it's like, oh, I like the parkour aspect. Figure out, okay, how would the designers have gotten to this point? How would they have tested maybe, oh, are people gonna like this mechanic or how did they come up with it in the first place? This will train you already to think a bit like a designer, but you actually know the end result. It's just figuring out the steps to get there. Whereas, okay, you can work on game design for your own game as well, but you don't really know yet what's fun. Whereas if you analyze a game that already exists and that you personally like, you play a lot, well, you know it's gonna be fun for at least you, and if you look at like the Steam reviews, probably some other people as well. And then lastly, let's say, okay, game development, whatever game you've been working on for the past month or like however long, you're kind of sick of it and you don't want to continue it, still put it into like a somewhat possible state where maybe there's like a bunch of features cut out, but you can start up the game basically and try out what is already there. And then just put it on something like an itch.io or another website where you can just go back in time, use the little portfolio and build up like the experience of, hey, these are some previous projects I made. These are the things I learned from it. And also just five years down the line, be able to go back and be like, hey, this was the first game I ever made. Oh my God, look how crappy it is versus the giant success that I've now made of a game. It also will help if maybe you don't want to become an indie developer, but you still just want to go into the games industry in general. Well, you still build up that portfolio as well. Anyways, those were 10 quick tips that I had. If you don't know who I am, we're game developers here. We've made our own game. We're working on our next game, Songs of Average, which is a roguelite set in Chinese mythology. So if that's something that interests you, be sure to head down below and wishlist that one. We make three videos every week, basically, where we talk about what are the things we're learning, giving some tips to other game developers, or just sharing progress on our own games. If that's something that interests you, be sure to subscribe as it really helps us out. And like I said, you get three videos a week filled with value like this. That's all I really had to say. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.